Hello, this is Eric with BC Gurus and this is part two of web apps and this is the setup basics video where we're just going to cover the basic setup of a web app and uh, how you can get started with those. So the first thing we should talk about are uh, the difference between a web app and a web app item and this kind of helps give an overview of uh, the theory behind web apps and basically the web app is uh, where you define all the fields and uh, describe uh, what type of items you're going to contain. So for a real estate listing example, um, the real estate listing would be the web app and then all of the different items within that real estate listing are the web app items. Um, you can see there's some other examples on here. Uh, if you were creating a blog web app, the web app would be the blog and then each of the posts would be a blog or would be a web app item. Um, for a menu, you would define what fields are on the menu and create that and then each item on that menu would turn into a web app item and uh, we'll walk you through the management interface of that and uh, the first part is really just creating the web app itself and this is kind of uh, what that creation screen looks like we'll see that in a second um, there's some things to think about uh, when you're defining the name of the web app that's going to play a role in the URL uh, for the details pages on the web app. So uh, if you're concerned with SEO, uh, you're going to want to make sure that your web app is named appropriately and uh, you'll kind of see that as we get into the admin interface here. There's a bunch of options on this screen. You can see those here. Um, a lot of these options are uh, only necessary for customer submitted web app items, um, for searching, for mapping. Um, you don't have to uh, use all of these different settings when you're just creating a basic web app uh, but we'll and we'll do a video on all of these things so we'll cover all the options throughout this series uh, but to start with we're just going to keep it real simple and basic for this first video here so we're in our back end section here and uh, we've got web apps So we're in our admin area of the website here and you can see we're in the web app section and we're just on the add web app page and uh, it also shows we don't have any web apps created for the site yet. Once you create some web apps, um, they'll start showing up here so you can just click on those links to manage them uh, as you create new web apps. But we don't have any so uh, we're just going to go ahead and create a sample and uh, pretty much the only field that's absolutely required is to give it a name and as I said, uh, the details link for the items you create will uh, use part of this URL. So you want to think about that if you're concerned with SEO. Uh, we'll just call this a test web app and uh, you can see that you can see that uh, as we fill in this name here it's going to uh, show the URL. Now you can take control of that beyond just the, the name itself but uh, by default you're going to get a name that corresponds pretty closely to what you put in this box. Uh, coming down here a little bit, the other options, these are basically defining if you're going to be using customer submitted web app items, these tell you what the different things a customer can do, such as can they add items, can they edit items, uh, things like that. Uh, down here there's some other options. Uh, some of these are relevant for customer submitted web app items. Some you can do, enable the search down here. Uh, we'll talk about that in detail in another video. Uh, one thing you may want to select uh, right away is the default template. So each item is going to have a details page and uh, that details page will be assigned one of your site-wide templates um, and you can customize that on a per item basis so not every item has to use the same template but most of the time you're going to want that and uh, so it's a good idea to come in here and select the template you want to use uh, from your site just so you don't have to go in and remember to set that for each individual item so we'll, we'll go ahead and say we want to use the default site template and uh, that's just like a page template uh, so it's whatever template you've defined to be the default one on the site it'll just uh, use that template there um, uh, other than that we can just go ahead and click uh, save here and it's going to go ahead and create the item and you can see when I do that uh, I now have the test web app listed over here under my web apps. Um, the next thing you're going to do is define the fields and then the layout and then the autoresponder if you're using customer submitted web app items but uh, we're not going to jump into that right away. 
Um, we'll cover that in the next few videos. The other thing you may want to do right off the bat is uh, define a default secure zone or a default RSS channel or default uh, classification. So web apps uh, can be assigned to a secure zone, uh, an RSS channel, or they can be assigned categories. And so if you're going to use those and you know they're uh, going to have some defaults for each item, you may want to set those here. Um, but we're just going to keep things real simple for now. So the next thing we're going to do is actually jump into creating some web app items. So when you're creating web app items, you just need to go to web apps and uh, click on the web app that you want to uh, add items to. And uh, if you ever do need to get back to the settings, uh, those initial settings box, you can click this edit web app settings, and that will take you back to the uh, screen where you can change these options. So you're not locked in uh, based on those first settings you create. But we're seeing a list of all the items we currently have, and we don't have any, so that's why we see this message. Uh, you can filter your items by by uh, first, uh, first letter of the item name, and uh, that can be pretty useful once you start uh, getting quite a few items in here. There's also a search box where you can search for an individual item, and uh, that can also make it a little easier to uh, find what you're looking for. Uh, you can see we've got an import box and an export box, and that allows you to uh, import and export your items. Uh, pretty straightforward there. Uh, when you click Add Item, it's going to bring up the uh, item creation screen and uh, we don't have any custom fields defined so the only thing uh, we get by default is just the template whether or not it's going to be enabled the item name and the item description uh, you can also come in here and set the release date and the expiration date and the waiting and uh, the release date will basically only enable this item after this date the expiration date will expire the item after this date, and then the waiting will uh, define the order uh, that the items show up in a list. Uh, those are all optional, and if you just leave them to the defaults, the items will become available immediately. So we'll create our first item, and we'll just call it uh, item one. And uh, you can see as I fill that in, uh, it's showing you what the details link for this specific item is going to be. So it's going to start with the test-web app, which is what we defined in the original settings and then it's going to assign a specific uh, SEO friendly URL based on this item name. Now you can edit this if you want to take more control but we'll just leave it at the default and then optionally you can come in here and fill in an item description. Now uh, the item description is just uh, HTML and this is going to show up by default on the details page for this item so we'll go ahead and fill in a heading here and uh, populate some content and uh, you can see uh, we've got full HTML support uh, and you can get pretty crazy. You can put lists in here, uh, images, you can even include module tags that link out to other uh, dynamic content of your site. So that allows you to be pretty flexible and create some pretty uh, interesting content within these things. Uh, occasionally uh, web app items won't have any content in here and that's just depending on the needs of your web app but this is optional um, but we'll go ahead and put it in there and we'll click a uh, save item and uh, the other button down here the save and add would just uh, allow you to create the item and then it would take you to a new item creation screen so if you're entering a lot of web apps or a lot of web app items at once you can just click save and add new and continuously add new items so uh, we'll go ahead and add a uh, another item uh, we'll just go back here click add item and we'll create a second one and we'll call this one item two and we'll just go ahead and click uh, save and add new item. When you, uh, when you get to the point where you need to update one of your items, you'll just come to the specific web app and uh, you can see it'll load up the list of items you have and you'll just go to the item you want and uh, click the edit link next to it and that will load up the uh, screen here. So we'll go ahead and paste in some content and uh, we'll call this one item two and uh, make just a couple basic changes here. And then you'll just click the update button and that will uh, save the changes to this item. There's also a preview button that you can click to see the actual uh, details screen. And that's just the default layout you get. 
and uh, preview is nice for when you want to disable an item or uh, set the expiration and start dates and uh, you want to see what the item is going to look like on your site uh, even though it's not enabled so normally you wouldn't be able to view that details page but you can still use the preview button down here and that will load up the item even if it's uh, currently disabled also when you're on the edit item page or the create item page um, you can also uh, do a couple other things to these web app items if you come to this actions box uh, if you wanted to m put the item in a secure zone so that only logged in people could see it you would use this box and just move uh, the appropriate secure zone over to the right and that would allow that web app item to uh, exist within that secure zone uh, you can add uh, you can add it to an RSS channel also a lot of the time you're going to want to classify your items because uh, one of the modules you have is that will allow you to output a list of items within a specific category so when you want to uh, assign an item to a category or more than one category you just move those categories over to the right and uh, this is all these categories are created just when uh, you go to the admin section of the uh, control panel and uh, define your classifications from the category section the same place you would do it from uh, for all the other modules that support categories now when we were um, when we were on the item creation or the web app setup screen we didn't define any defaults for the secure zone or the categories but if we had um, you wouldn't have to go through that step all the items you would create would by default uh, respect those settings uh, so that uh, that can save you some admin work if you want to go ahead and set those up when you're first creating the web app so once you've created your web app and created some web app items, uh, the next step you're going to have to go through is actually uh, telling your website how and where to output those items. And in this case, we've just created a page and uh, we've used one of the modules that will output a list of web app items. Um, you have a lot of different module tags and settings you can use to configure this. Um, but for now, we've got a very basic one that just shows a list of all our items. And uh, that's what this module is. We'll cover all those modules in detail in one of the later videos. Um, so we've created this page and so you can see what it looks like if we come over to our uh, preview output of this page you can see pretty standard page with the title and then it's showing the list of items and uh, you can click on the item and uh, it'll take you to the details link for that item and then show you the content and uh, you can output this in pretty much any way you want uh, the details as well as the link or the list templates uh, we will cover that in detail in another video as well but this is uh, just kind of a basic idea of what you get out of the box with web apps